Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Air Today Throws Nation. In today's video, we are gonna break down the six pillars of the discus using Frederick Dacre's 7078 as the technical model. And what's really cool about today is that Frederick himself is going to add some comments from an interview we just conducted. He also has a masterclass coming up and details for that are at the end of this video. So check it out. All right, uh, everybody who's watching, thanks so much for tuning in to this interview with Frederick Dakers. And I do say Dakers, right? Or is it Dockers? Yeah, you got it right. You got it right. Okay, it's Dakers. Frederick Dakers, he is a four, a three-time world finalist, world silver medalist in 2019, 2016 Olympian, an incredible resume. Let's see, Commonwealth record, Jamaican national record. You've had 64 competitions over 65 meters, 19 performances at 65 meters, 15 performances at 66 meters, 10 performances at 67 meters, 16 performances at 68 meters. I think I have three at 69 and of course your PR 70, 78. So one over 70 or big member of the 70 meter club, which is pretty impressive. And you've done all that essentially in the last four years. <laughs> really impressive. So with that being said, when did you start mm -hmm. growing and how did you get into throwing? Um, I started throwing in at 16, 17, I think. Yeah, technically about 10 years ago, I started throwing. Um, I got into it because I had a brother. <laughs> he was a bit delinquent because he was missing training and all that. And, you know, my coach said, okay, cool. Um, he needs to speak to my brother. So that's when he realized that, oh, wow, his brother has a brother, which was me. So I said, okay, cool. So I'm trying for the track and field team. A very well known school um in well, in Jamaica, um Calabar High. Okay, right. So yeah, I went to Calabar High and it was a very great sporting school. So I said, Okay, cool, it never made any sense. Uh not do anything so you know just come through you once commented that your coach is a perfectionist right and that's coach yeah. robinson and coach robinson's the coach at calabar right yeah of course yeah so tell me a little about that how that began and how it's evolved because he took you from the beginning to a world medalist and multi-time world finalist so when i started um i was the skinniest guy like i was you, technically the skinniest guy um but what i was was deceptively strong so my coach said, okay, cool. He never knew where to put me. So I said, okay, cool. you know what, um, try the discus. Just try to throw the discus. So I said, okay, cool. I threw the discus. When you reach a certain point, I will start to show you, like give you attention. Until then, you will continue to throw behind my back. <laughs> Basically, that was the whole thing. So I had to earn his, you know, um, attention, right? So I said, okay, cool. Let me show you some attention. Let's see, you. Let's see what you can do. And that's when the hard part started. That's when I started to so, you know, I have to catch the technique, you know, the movement is not just stand throws anymore. I have to go in, so like, um, the, like half turns, 180s, um, South African and so all that. And, you know, I had to get it. But the things that I was very quick on, like I was very quick. So I had no problems to get, get, um, get in the movements. Yeah, it sounds very uh, in line with how we approach the throw, you right, with our system. It's all about the why, right? It's never yeah. fix the position. It's, we talk about... How do you, you have to learn how to create a position, right? Yeah. That, that's kind of my. I like that. I like that. So how, you know, how did COVID affect you? I know you started out the year. I mean, really awesome. I think you, what, like your, your second or third meet in, it was 69, you know, 69 meters again. Yes. Right? Obviously yeah, COVID um... hits, <laughs> you didn't get a chance to get over to Europe. With COVID hitting, um, you know, I was disappointed because I felt like this year I, I was in really good shape because um, the reason why I, I was thrown off last year because I did a surgery in 2018. So it went into me, you know, trying to get back in 2019 to get back my feeling, get back everything. So the entire 2019 season, I was very uncomfortable, right? And that was a knee surgery. So yeah. that's the knee surgery I did. So to actually feel um, comfortable again, I never really felt comfortable through the year. But um, in the starting of 2020, that's when I was actually okay. My body felt good and everything. Um, I was even surprised at the 69 meters early on. I normally throw well at that meet. I don't know, it's a vibe thing there. I don't know why. But yeah, I normally throw well there. But um, 69 was not in my, I knew, I, I knew what I was doing in training, but, yeah, um, it was, you know, somewhat, 
it was surprising, but not surprising, if you understand. Here's the thing. Speaking about weight training for throwers, they all want to know how strong you are. <laughs> so what, how, <laughs> you know, uh, what, uh, what's your, what are your, what are your numbers in the gym? Your clean, your snatch, your bench, your squat. All, all, right, right. all right. So my best clean was about 385. And that was yeah, a catch um, or, or a pull? My best snatch is no catch, catch. Okay. Catch. Okay. Oh, with the pull, um, just pull only like our right. the pull only is about about four seven five. Oh, so pretty pretty. Four seven five, but just the pull. Um, with the catch, it's three seven five, so a hundred pounds less. Um, my best snatch is actually three hundred and eight pounds. I think one forty mm. kilo. We do uh, variations of squats. So like we have um, quarter squats, we have parallel squats. I think for parallel squat, uh, my best squat is about 565. My best front squat is, I think, 525. Oh, wow. That's a good front squat. Like 525 pounds. Yeah. Okay. Well, that says a lot. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. yeah. My bench press, which I am... Yeah, we didn't say... I'm a bit proud of, but... <laughs> yeah. My bench press, which I'm a bit proud of, but then I realized that, you know, you have guys who are, like, multi-repping my, my max. Um, it's actually 475. Oh, wow. You got long friggin' arms, yeah. man. So that's a long way to push that thing. <laughs> yeah. You know, how many throws do you take in a, in a regular practice? How many days a week do you throw? And how many days a week are you in the weight room? We're in the weight room basically um, four days a week. Um, we throw five days a week. And how many, how many throws do you normally do in a session? No, it's just one, one throwing session a day. So, um, yeah, we get up to about, you know, 60 throws. Each day, so yeah. 60? And do you vary it? Is it all 2Ks or do you like mix up your weights and stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we mix it up based on, the, based on where the season is, yeah. Okay. I've seen some videos of you in the weight room. It doesn't look like the fanciest weight room. No. Right? And very basic. But th th yeah, but that was, <laughs> like, I, I, and I thought that was great because you're an Olympian, you're a multi time world finalist, you're a world medalist, you know, you've thrown 70 meters and you basically just have, you got weights and a basic setup, and that's basically what you need. That's what I try to tell people. They don't have to get super fancy. You got to just, got to be that's able to. That's what you need. Yeah. You know, you have a 475 bench. How important do you think strength is to throwing far? At a certain point, strength means nothing. Hmm. It's how fast you can move the implement, right? Yeah. So you can be as strong as a horse if you can move the implement fast. Yeah. You were talking about moving fast. You know, one of the things we focus on or we teach our athletes and our, we have our system, we teach them that if you spend too much time on strength, you get really strong, but you can be slow. So you have to spend time on explosive work yeah. and moving the bar fast and strength, right? So we put basically the three mm -hmm. training speeds into the weight room. Do you do something similar? Or yeah, 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 we do. And I genuinely want to get into that, but I'll leave that for the master class. I have a few things to say about that. Okay, so, good. yeah. Very cool. How does it feel to throw 70 meters? I was not surprised, to be honest. Yeah. I genuinely knew I had more because I was throwing, like, for my warm ups, I was warming up, like, easy. But the thing is that I have a problem with saving. That was that's my big issue. So my thing is that once I can save my throws, I can get very big throws. Okay. But it's all about saving them. Guys, set it up. So this is how we look at we look at the the wind up. Obviously, we want to shift right, get around the axis, attack the sprint phase. You're we're re mm -hmm. locking down the power, and then deliver. So th those are our six pillars, mm -hmm. right? How we kind of help to teach people to throw. I know you'll probably cover this stuff in the master class, but I really yeah. love how you, you set up, you really create great separation and stretch reflex at the start. That's basically the key to the chain reaction. Does this do us justice to your throw? Did we, did we break it down simply? <laughs> it, all right, it does. Um, solid breakdown, solid breakdown. Um, everything is right, like technically, like, you know, solid, solid, solid. Great, great. All right, but there are, all right, so like your your breakdown was you know a solid breakdown. I'm glad we are we are Frederick approved. That's good. <laughs> if you look at this throw, I fell back in the ring in because I was trying to hold back. 
Oh, at the finish or in the... Yeah, at the end, yeah. at the end, at the end of the, um, right. the, the finish, right the finish of the throw. Yeah. yeah, I felt black in the throw. I don't, like, if I get a good throw, I'm going to track, I'm going to probably follow, I'm not going to recover right. or recover the throw that easy. I said in the master class, and there's actually a story, there's actually a story to that throw, or a story to that um, meet, actually. So um, I'm going get, to get into that in the master class. It was a good day for me, so to get this, this was actually very good. And that's when I wanted to go harder because I realized I got this throw over 70. So I said, oh, wow, and I have more. So that I was going to push harder. But then the whole situation happened and, you know, it kind of threw me off and all of that. I get into feeling, like feeling in class also. You know, it looks like to me, like you really work on taking the path from here to here. That's all. That's what we, t we kind of teach is once you're done with the wind, you got to take it long. We, we preach, you got to be long, right? And you look really long. Like I, I use you as an example. And I say, people think this guy is like mm -hmm. six, seven, six, eight, and he's like six, three, six, four. And I said, that's because he throws mm -hmm. so long. This long pattern is when I'm ready. Yeah, we try to keep it long. Um, my, my throw here, or my throw generally, my type of throwing or my way how to throw, mm -hmm. is a mixture of a lot of, I think, three throws. Okay, that was one of my questions. Three throws? Yeah, but um, that's that's what I'm going to you know, cover in the master class. Also. Oh, God, that was the like biggest how tease. My throw is built. <laughs> <laughs> okay. To me, that looks a little Robert Harding-ish right there. Ah! You got one, you got one, you got one. Good, yeah. You got one, but yeah. What's your nutrition? Like? Yeah, I don't store fat. So um, I burn fat really easily. So um, I have to be eating somewhat unhealthy to maintain my weight or to get my weight up after be eating junk food. We were testing the big, being big, like, and I realized that while I was very strong, I was extremely slow. Mm. Yeah. As explosive as I normally, without thinking, I would do things. No, I have to be, you know, like my mind is saying, go, but the body is saying, uh, and that it was never my style of moving or throwing or general living. Yeah, so that's a thing. That's, a, that's really a thing for me. So I'm, I'm not the best person to speak on, you know, but I do think um, that is really good because, like, when you feel good, when you eat good, you feel good. Yeah like you said, find your range and ultimately eating, finding that right balance. Right. And then uh, what advice would you give to young throwers starting out? I'd probably tell them that it's good to learn the technique and understand the technique. You know, it should be, it's going to be rough, but it's going to be better. Be sure to, you know, check out Arate Throws Nation, Throw mm -hmm. Chain Reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And then what advice would you give to uh, to coaches? Don't just be set on doing things your way. As a young thrower, um, I realized that certain people do far a certain way, others, you know, a separate way. Um, so always be open to learn, always be open to, you know, listen to your athletes and all that. Yeah, so really and truly, um, throwing is dynamic, so there's not one set way to get a role. Tell us again about the master class you're conducting next week. It sounds really awesome, really comprehensive, going in depth on your technique. So the master class is really and truly to actually get people to start thinking, um, how to analyze your own technique, um, how to really get the best out of your body, like in terms of technique-wise, um, what you need to do to actually get to a point where you are okay with the technique, where you can say, okay, well, I'm okay with this. The reason why my discus is flying like that is because I did this wrong, this wrong, or it might be that I did this wrong, or I did that wrong. It's going to be very interactive because they're going to be, as you say, there's going to be a lot of Q&A. Um, we're going to break down a lot of techniques. We're going to look at, um, you know, a few of the best throwers in the world. Um, we can try to break down their technique. We're going to try to break down my technique. It's going to be a general learning, like learning how to be better, basically. Like everything I've been through, um, I'm trying to get others to actually, you know, understand why I do certain things a certain way, how you can get to a certain point. 
and always be always be willing to learn always be willing to expand your knowledge so for people that are interested they can just dm you on uh instagram you'll give them the registration details a bunch of the proceeds will go to uh Help yeah, so, charities in Jamaica. Yeah, a few charities in Jamaica. Yeah. Gross okay. Okay. Food. Okay. Favorite yeah. favorite fast food. Um, definitely burgers. Uh, favorite movie. Van Helsing. Favorite musician. Michael Bolton. Nice. Uh, what do you like better, chicken wings or tacos? Chicken wings. <laughs> okay. Your favorite discus thrower from 2000 to now. I like uh, Robert Hardy. I think um, Haddad is a really close, like Haddad is like really up there as well. So it's really hard for me to actually choose one. That, that's the thing I use to actually be my technique. But, uh, <laughs> I'm like, like, yeah, I'm right there. <laughs> 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 no, that's not that's not the thing. But yeah, those are those are like yeah. All right, hey man. Well, thanks so much. Really appreciate you taking the time. Wish you a fast recovery. Meeting you, and I look forward to meeting you in person, man. <laughs> same, bro. Same. <laughs>